Okay, season one, episode two of Strange New Worlds after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and episode two of Strange New Worlds uh, involves the crew of the Enterprise coming upon a comet that looks like it's going to collide uh, to a planet with millions of you know, pre-industrialized uh, uh, people. And so uh, the Enterprise moves in in order to try to save these people from this comet that's going to wipe out everything. And, uh, of course, they come up uh, against uh, some um, difficulties in doing this, which we won't go into. What we will say is that this was a good episode to highlight uh, Cadet Uhura. Uh, we see for the first time that uh, she is... Um, fluent in several languages, 30-some languages, um, including um, uh, most of them uh, from uh, the area of the world she comes from. Uh, she is from Kenya, and therefore um, uh, she knows a number of the languages in the general area of the world. Then uh, she's also uh, a very good at figuring out linguistics, uh, kind of an extension on uh, Hoshi uh, in uh, Enterprise, uh, being able to um, be able to decode different kinds of uh, languages uh, written and spoken. So we're able to uh, highlight her uh, not only in that, but also to establish her as a pretty good singer. Uh, in the uh, original series uh, episodes, uh, Uhura did a lot of singing, and uh, usually in their rec room uh, scenes and things such as this. And uh, this is, um, in fact, it was a plot of one of the original episodes of uh, a uh, of losing her voice as a result of uh, her just singing for fun. This is um, starting the characterization on Ahura. Now, uh, also, uh, we introduce a, a new character of Hammer. He is the new chief engineer, and uh, he is uh, an alien and also blind. We bring in uh, kind of a combination, in my view, of uh, Jordy who uh, was also visually impaired, except in this case, uh, Hemmer does not rely on any technology to know where things are, uh, but rather uh, he has uh, other senses that are uh, very heightened. And um, he also uh, shares uh, some of the bravado that uh, we've seen in um, Stamets in Discovery. So uh, an interesting character we'll learn more about as time goes on. Um, also, uh, we find uh, how this captain is going to be. We talked a little bit about that last time, that uh, he is going to keep a captain's table. And uh, a captain's table goes way back in naval tradition, where uh, the captain would invite his senior officers, and usually a junior officer, uh, to, uh, to have dinner with him in order to, um, uh, first of all, give kind of a treat for the junior officer, and also invite the junior officer as captain kind of part of the crew. And so uh, that uh, officer is always on their best behavior. In this case, uh, there is also a tradition of uh, hazing in which uh, the junior officer is uh, told to dress formally when uh, everybody else is casual. In fact, we find this captain a very casual captain, especially compared with Picard, who was very formal. Uh, it wasn't until the last episode of TNG that he even... Um, played poker with uh, the uh, senior officers. So uh, keeping a captain's table wasn't something he would do, but it is something that Pike does. And Pike tends to uh, talk to his officers, except when uh, on the bridge, uh, by their first names. And uh, this is something else that a close-knit crew would do. And uh, we see that uh, uh, very little uh, in Kirk's time. It was Spock and Bones were the only ones that uh, were called by their first names. Uh, Picard did with uh, Riker, more often calling him number one than Will. But uh, you, you saw very little of that otherwise. So uh, this is a different kind of captain. Uh, he is uh, uh, much more approachable, uh, much more warm, but still has, uh, uh, he's a fighting captain, as, uh, as we see uh, in this episode. 
uh, he does have a, a self-effacing personality. This is something that I kind of expected out of Archer, but, but Archer was uh, uh, not quite, he was trying to get away, no doubt, from his Quantum Leap character, um, uh, and, and uh, I think that uh, that probably made him uh, kind of awkward in, in the role, but that's a different story. Um, we see more uh, about Spock, uh, where uh, he's trying on an away mission uh, to encourage uh, Uhura to, to try her best. And uh, she says, was that your version of a pep talk? And he says, uh, yes, I've been practicing. I thought it was a funny line. Um, we're finding out also uh, more about the bridge crew, especially uh, Lieutenant Ortegas, who is their uh, crack um, uh, helmsman. And uh, uh, she uh, has shown some of her skills in uh, maneuvering the ship. And, and this is another thing about the special effects that uh, were in this show. Uh, we see the ship move more. Roddenberry was very specific that the Enterprise was always going to be um, uh, shot on a flat plane as it's, it's a sailing ship. However, uh, we have seen recently that the ship can do more maneuvers. Part of the reason it couldn't do maneuvers in the original series, of course, was that it was a huge model in a small studio and they really couldn't manipulate it much and the uh, gimbals on the camera were not as advanced as they were later. And of course, this is all done in CG so they can do anything that they want. And uh, the extent of CG that's available now does make a lot more maneuverability in the ship. Now, uh, uh, speaking of special effects, uh, we did have in our nemesis this time, the Shepherds, uh, a, um, uh, an alien, you could see a, a pulsating skull um, and uh, other effects. It was a, a very good uh, makeup and appliance job on this alien. Uh, they still have uh, in the Star Trek tradition, usually part of a human face showing in order to be able to emote. But uh, what they did in the appliances and uh, the effects that they added onto this uh, was very believable and a different looking kind of alien that we've seen before. Oh, and the Easter egg for this week is trilithium resin. Uh, that was first used in Starship Mine in TNG, and uh, they mention it uh, in this episode. That was uh, a nice little Easter egg there. So, um, all in all, I, uh, I really like this episode. Uh, we see and learn more about the crew. Uh, we still have uh, uh, the ongoing story of Pike's discomfort with knowing what his future is. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, number one is a confidant and uh, will spend time with him in his quarters, but on a very platonic level. Uh, I don't think they have any kind of relationship at all other than a close friendship, very much like um, uh, Kirk and Bones did. And uh, we also um, have uh, a little of the personality of, uh, of Kirk's brother uh, that's uh, shown in this as well, Sam. So uh, a good episode. Uh, I, I like this. It is, um, uh, I also like the, uh, uh, the colors. Uh, this is one that kind of showed that. Uh, they have their division colors even in the um, uh, EVA uniforms. Uh, they have uh, a lot of color in the ship in a way that uh, uh, previous treks uh, in, in New Trek have been very gray. Uh, this is very bright and colorful, very much like the original series. It has a very upbeat feel to it, even when the situation is dire. So I'd like to know what you think about this. Please put it down in the comments and we'll read all of them and answer as many as we can. And uh, also, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please do so. We always appreciate it. It will help the channel grow. And uh, we have more videos for you once again this week. Uh, we have more uh, Doctor Who news. We have another original series episode we're going to review. So um, stay close by. We see you next time. Don't go far.